Jonathan in Bristol, good morning. You're on top of there. Hello, yeah. Well, first of all, I'd like to talk about mobile phones. That isn't my point, but uh, after hearing that, I must just make a point that I think about mobile phones. When you're on a train, especially. Oh, it's the Egypt that picks up a mobile phone oh, and has to make a telephone conversation at the top of his or her voice is it but everybody can hear it. I feel like running up, snatching the phone off of them and saying, we don't want to hear this, switch it off when you get to your destination or ring back and talk to them when you get there. We don't want to hear your conversation, but that isn't my point. Can I, before you leave that point, can I just tell you a story that you may, some may have heard before. But it is my favourite mobile phone story. And as I was there, I have to enjoy it every opportunity that's given to me. So would you indulge me in this? Yes, for a yes, moment? yes, I do. I used to live in Penzance. I used to travel to London by train. And one morning, having left Penzance, I don't know, it was still dark, you know. I was the only person in the carriage, bar one. He sat there. I didn't like the look of him, so I didn't speak to him. And I sat there, and he didn't like the look of me, so he didn't speak to me. When we got to about Plymouth, the train was filling, but it was only full. And he became more animated, and he had a mobile phone. In those days, I didn't have one. But then he started. For the benefit of the whole carriage, mm -hmm. he said, he might go, da, 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 and he said, Oh, hello, darling. Rupert here, yes. Been to the country, see the carrot countries, yes. Jolly good weekend, super food, yes. Yes, looking forward to getting back. Would you change my 3.15 to 3.30? And could you change my 4.45 to 5.15? Thank you, sweetie, bye now. And he made these calls at about intervals of five minutes or so. And people started to look at each other because mobile phones were fairly rare then. And people were looking uncomfortably in his direction and at each other. And after he'd made, oh, God knows how many of these calls, I will, I will be fair and not exaggerate, but it was at least ten. <laughs> he got up and went to the restaurant car. Well, we would think that's where he went. We don't care, really. And he left this mobile phone on the table of the seat that he'd been sitting at, right? In full view, I could see it, and others could see it. And it rang. And this bloke, I wish it had been me, and I, I, I'm tempted to say it was, but it wasn't. This chap walked over, picked it up, opened the window of the train, and hurled it through the window. Right? <laughs> and we waited. Everybody went, yes! Well, and then we sat there quietly, looking as though metal wouldn't melt in our mouth. And he came back, and he sat at the table, and he looked at the table, and he looked on the floor. And he looked around the seat. But he never asked anybody. I think he guessed what happened to his face. <laughs> I can tell him where it is in Fieldney, and you can have it. And I just, I was so, it was one of those heartwarming moments, you know. That's a story I should never forget. Everybody I loved it. Honest, I loved it. I loved it.